Hello, my name is Sherry from livingdiystyle.com and today I'd like to share with you how to make my favorite baby shoe style. It's a style of baby shoe that I made for my own girls when they were babies and it's called the reversible crib shoe. I think you're really going to enjoy making these shoes for babies and toddlers, not only because they are reversible, so they're two pairs of shoes in one, um, also because they're extremely practical. They slip on easily, and speaking from experience, they stay on busy feet really well. You probably noticed in the photos that you just saw that you can make four different styles from my pattern. But in this video, for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to make the basic shoe. So once you have the pattern, you can make any style that you want. The tutorial that comes with this pattern will teach you in a step-by-step -step style with photos how to include these variations. I hope you enjoy this how-to video. Okay, so to start, you're going to need to cut out two soles, two toe patterns, and two heel patterns in the exterior fabric of your choice. You're also going to need the same amount for your interior fabric, and you'll need to again cut out the same amount for your fusible fleece, which adds structure to the shoe, so you really don't want to skip that part. So here's a little trick I use to cut out the paper patterns. Instead of tracing them, I like to just fold the fabric over and then pin the paper pattern to the fabric so that after I cut it out, now I have two pieces instead of just one. Now this is just my preference. You can do it however you'd like. Now we need to iron on our fusible fleece. Make sure that you place the adhesive shiny side down facing the wrong side of the interior fabric as I'm doing here because if you do it the other way around you're going to end up with glue on your iron. Never a good thing. We're going to use the sole stitch guide that comes with this sewing pattern because it gives you a perfect baby shoe shape every time. So what I'm doing here is I'm just tracing the pattern and then I'm flipping the paper pattern over and then tracing it onto the other shoe and this is going to give me a left and a right shoe that I'm going to use later as a guide. Now place the interior and exterior heels right sides together and sew a quarter inch seam allowance along the top. So once you're done pressing the seam, we're going to use this photo as a guide to help us to make a channel for our elastic to go into. So what I've done here is I've made a top stitch as close to the edge as possible and then I sewed a quarter inch down from the top stitch and that makes two lines of stitching for our channel. Now measure the elastic based on the size chart in the pattern. Now insert the elastic into one end and fish it through to the other side. Make sure that you're aware of where the loose end is so it doesn't get lost inside the channel. 
to secure the elastic. Now move the safety pin out of the way and sew the other end. This is how the heel should look when it's done. Now we're going to start putting everything together. Place the heel and the toe pattern with the exterior fabrics facing each other. Line up one corner and then pin it in place. Now we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Then lay the interior toe pattern down on top of the pinned piece and slowly unpin and then repin while keeping the heel in place the whole time. Using a quarter inch seam allowance, sew across the top. Now I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and sew a 1 8 inch top stitch across the top to give it more of a professional look. Okay, now we're ready to put everything together. So in order to do that, place the finished uppers on top of the soles with the interior sides facing each other. In my case, that would be the polka dotted sides. Keep in mind for this particular pair of shoes, there is no left and right sole. Um, here I'm just showing you the stitch guide that we drew in earlier. That's what makes the left and the right shoe for this pair of shoes. So you can place the upper on either shoe. In the end, it doesn't really make a difference. Now we're going to pin it into place. You'll notice on the sole pattern, there is an arrow at the heel, and there's also an arrow at the toe. We're going to align the heel and the toe arrows, and then we're going to pin those in place first and then we're going to alternate pinning the sides as we pin around the shoe. is what it should look like when you're done. Now take it over to your sewing machine, flip it over so the stitch guide is up. Now just sew right over the top of the stitch guide that you drew in earlier. Unfortunately I couldn't sew and hold the camera at the same time so I had to put the camera down. But here you see that I finished up and I'm just taking the pins out. So at this point you could choose to be done. If you don't want to make them reversible you would just trim off the excess seam and turn them right side out. As you can see here these leather ones are not reversible but they're still pretty cute. But for those of you who want to make them reversible I'll show you how to do that right now. In order to make them reversible you need to place the soles directly on top of the shoes and you'll notice that the seams of the shoes are on the outside. Now you'll need to pin the sole in place using the arrows to guide you just like before. You'll notice that this part has a sandwich effect. The sole on the bottom and the sole on the top is kind of like the bread on a sandwich. In the middle where the shoe is at is kind of like the cheese or the meat in the middle of a sandwich.
when you flip the sandwich over, you'll see that on one side it has the stitch guide. That's the side that needs to be facing up and that's the side that needs to go into your sewing machine. You need to stitch right over that stitch guide. You're going to sew right over the stitches that you sewed earlier. You're not going to be making new stitches. You're just going to go right over those stitches. So continue sewing around the stitch guide, but don't sew all the way around. Leave about a two inch opening on one side so that we can pull the shoe out later when we're done. Also, when you sew the sole on, make sure that at the beginning when you start sewing that you backstitch. And also when you're finishing up, make sure to backstitch. We want the opening edges to be nice and strong so they don't rip when we pull the shoe out. So now I've finished up my sewing and I've pulled out my pins and so now I'm just going to trim off the excess seam except for the opening. I'm not going to trim that off because I need that extra fabric to tuck it inside in just a second. Okay so now I'm going to reach inside the shoe and I'm going to look for the heel and I'll Pull that out first and then I'm just going to kind of slowly and gently pull out the rest of the shoe as I turn it right side out. And you should see the interior fabric part of the shoe first as you see here. And I'm just kind of pushing on the seams to give the shoe a nice shape. Now I'm flipping the shoe over to the exterior side so I can see how that looks. Okay, everything's looking pretty good, so I'm just going to tuck in the extra fabric. And then I just need to hand sew it closed with either an invisible stitch, also called the slip stitch, or stitch in the ditch. Uh, but if you're not up for that, you could also use the good old classic whip stitch. But uh, just keep in mind that the whip stitch, unlike the invisible stitch, would be visible, but it still looks pretty good. And when you're done, they should look something like this. For more adorable baby, toddler, and kid shoe sewing patterns, please visit livingdiystyle.com or wait for the clickable link at the end of the video. If you like this video, I sure would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Do you feel like you have the confidence now to make baby shoes after watching this video? If so, let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.